Morning, boys and girls. It's Monday, March 30th, and um, we're still in, uh, starting the lockdown today at 5 o'clock. So I hope all of you are staying safe and um, doing the correct thing, washing your hands, not going out, um, making sure you're doing a good job of washing your hands, using a lot of hand sanitizer, keeping your distance from everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about something that we have talked about before, and that is going to be bacteria, and then we're going to talk a little bit about viruses, okay? And the reason that I'm doing that is because you are living in an unprecedented time. Uh, it's a global pandemic, and I have never been through a pandemic, so this is the first time for me, so it is, uh, things are a little uncertain. But I'm going to try to put your mind at ease a little bit and just talk to you a little bit about how viruses and bacteria are different. There are some similarities, but they are a little different. So the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to basically talk about where is bacteria. Well, bacteria is everywhere. It is the most abundant living organism on earth. It is a living organism. So basically it could go through everything that we go through. It can eat, it can move, and it can reproduce. So it doesn't have to have anything to help it survive. You've got a lot of bacteria inside your mouth. You've got a whole lot of it in your stomach. Um, basically all of that bacteria is there to help you digest and process your food. Um, so that's a very important part of bacteria. You also have bacteria on your skin. There's bacteria all over your house. There's bacteria all over the ground pretty much all over everything. And the good news about the bacteria is that only about 1% out of 100% are bad for you. So um, not a horrible, horrible thing. All right, so let's talk about how bacteria was discovered. Um, a famous Dutch lens maker, his name was Ant Anthony von Leeuwenhoek or Leeuwenhoek. I'm not sure how to say his last name exactly, but he was a, an amateur lens maker. He was making glasses back in the day in the 1670s, and he decided to put a bunch of lenses together. He wanted to see if he could make some sort of microscope. Well, when he made this, he figured um, that it would more than likely work, obviously, or he wouldn't have done it. He started to take samples of his plaque off his teeth pond water, he started noticing small little animals moving around underneath this lens, this 200 lens microscope he made. Um, and he called them animalcules. And this is when bacteria was first discovered. So it's been here ever since the earth was created. Okay, there's a lot of bacteria around that does things that we can never imagine, um, that I could never imagine. But it's been here forever, but that's pretty much when it was first discovered. It is an organism, though. So always remember that, that bacteria is alive. It can do everything that we can do for the most part, except for speak and have, you know, have a heartbeat and things like that. But it can move around, it can eat, and it can reproduce. And it's also made of just one cell. Okay, so that's why you can't see them. They're everywhere around you, but you can never, ever see them. Um, so just remember that the cell is the smallest living unit on Earth that you could ever have. Okay, so they have just one cell, and they're super simple. They're super small, um, not a lot to them. They're just very basic. And I drew a couple, well, I actually drew three types of bacteria that we're going to talk about. Um, the first one... And you guys remember this one because I had you draw it on one of your assignments is the spiral shaped bacteria. All right. And we call this the spirilla. That is the scientific given name for this spiral shaped bacteria. And this particular bacteria causes something called Lyme disease. Okay. And Lyme disease is a bacterial infection from ticks. So as long as you're not getting bitten by any ticks, they cannot send this virus, I mean this bacteria to you. So as long as you're checking yourself after you come in from outdoors and you don't have any ticks on you, you're probably pretty safe from this one. Um, very crazy looking shape, 
um, really funky, right? So uh, that's one of the types that we're with that uh, I wanted to show you. The next one is going to be the rod shaped ones. Okay, so this is another form of bacteria. Uh, this is also the scientific name is Bacilli. Okay, and it causes E. coli poisoning. And if you don't know what E. coli is, hopefully you never will because E. coli gives you uh, food poisoning which I heard was extremely uncomfortable. I don't think I've ever had it, but uh, I've had friends that had, and they said that it was anything but a walk in the park. It was a very, very difficult uh, thing to overcome. Made them extremely weak. They lost a lot of bodily fluids, and uh, they were messed up for a while. So definitely can mess you up, um, E. coli. And then one of the ones we really talked a lot about, and one that's pretty typical around here to get in the uh, wintertime, is going to be the strep throat bacteria, which these are spear shaped, okay? They're round or they're globular looking. Um, and the scientific name for these is cocci, okay? And that's why the scientific name for strep throat is streptococcus. Streptococcus comes from the scientific name of cocci. So strep throat is going to be this cocci shaped um, uh, bacteria. So those are the three that we kind of have talked about before. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how um, bacteria can move. Bacteria can move um, and it can survive on its own, okay? So if for some reason you sneezed on a desk and someone came behind you and rubbed their hand on it and they rubbed their eyes or their nose or their mouth or ate a bag of chips or something, that is one way to get bacteria inside of you. And there are varying uh, hours that it can live on specific surfaces. Obviously, like I told you, bacteria have the ability to replicate um, through meiosis and mitosis, which we're not gonna talk about because that's a very high school term, but they can separate and have babies and they can reproduce if they get into a good environment very quickly. So, um, the best thing you can do, like we talked about just a few minutes ago, is to wash your hands and to keep your hands away from your face. So there's only a couple of ways that bacteria can get into your body, and that's going to be through your eyes, through your nose, through your mouth. Um, and if you keep your hands away from your face and you are constantly washing your hands, then there should not be anything that gets inside of it. Obviously, we make mistakes from time to time and forget to disinfect and we don't wash our hands as much as we should and that's usually when we get some sort of maybe strep throat or some sort of virus inside of us. So we're going to end this on bacteria right now and then we're going to do one on viruses and then I'm going to have you do a little assignment, okay? All right.